Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to everybody. And I'm sure we'll have a few stragglers coming in, but that's fine. Um, I'd like to get uh, us started and welcoming Dr. Nelson Rivera, who has been with us before. He's not a new face, but we're so happy to have him. And he's now the um, official title is the St. John's Summit Visiting Professor of Theology and Ethics at ULS. Thank you for <laughs> Now I know. <laughs> but he's here to because he's done a lot of work in ecumenism. He's on the committee for the Roman Catholic Lutheran Dialogue. Plus, um, and this week marks the start of the Week of Prayer for Christian Unity. And um, you should have gotten um, a booklet for a daily scripture and prayer guide this morning as you left church or you will when we go to church. <laughs> um, and this year's subject, uh, this year's um, theme is you shall love the Lord your God and your neighbor as yourself, which is so, I think, so pertinent for what's going on in the world today, both here in the country, but especially in the Middle East and in Africa and everywhere. Um, the prayers, I think, it, it, are very moving and it's a really good for us not only to pray for Christian unity and tolerance and working together amongst one another, but amongst all people. So, so, so that's this week. That's this, this week. This yes, week. that's okay. this week. Um, and uh, it's always between the Feast of St. Peter and Paul, and it also encompasses Martin Luther King weekend, which is, I think, wonderful. And it's just with his message of um, unity and uh, openness to others. But today and next week, we are going to focus on our Christian unity. We have so many different similar Christian churches, um, but we are all united in one common baptism and faith in Christ. So, well, thank you. Let you thank go. you. An honor always to be back here in the classroom. Um, Elizabeth and I were speaking about how to divide. We have two Sundays today and next Sunday. And we came up with this idea to introduce the topic by speaking of the work of the WCC, the World Council of Churches, what uh, the ELCA, uh, the kind of engagements, ecumenical engagements the ELCA has right now as we, as we speak. So I put together something. I didn't want to be too distracting with a PowerPoint presentation. So all the basic, very basic, uh, bare bones information is here. So take it with you. And we are going to at point refer to some of the data that we have summarized for you. But most important, as I always like to do, is uh, this is a conversation. Uh, what you already know and what you don't know and what I'm going to share with you about ecumenical relationship, especially the work of the ELCA. <laughs> Originally, the idea was to speak just about the Lutheran Roman Catholic dialogue, an ongoing dialogue, um, ongoing means since 1965, constantly, I mean. And it will probably continue for the next 50 years at least. <laughs> so we will see it. Uh, the dialogue, ELCA dialogue with Catholic is the longest lasting. And in many ways, the most complex of the dialogues. And there are several reasons for that. One of the reasons is we're speaking about the Roman Catholic Church a very old church with a lot of documentation. I mean, a lot of documentation to go through. Um, it's a huge task. Uh, also because we owe, to be honest, partly to the Catholic Church, especially since the Second Vatican Council, 1962 through 1965, we owe then a lot of the uh, contemporary impulse for ecumenical relationships, meaning Catholics gave it a, a, a strong push. And Lutherans, immediately after the council ended, 1965, jumped 
into that wagon, so to speak, and the dialogue commenced right there and have continued now for more than 50 years. The one I am involved in is the 13th, 13th round of conversations with Roman Catholic Church. Initially, uh, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod was involved, but they left the dialogue in 2009. And you probably know some of the reasons why 2009, but that's not the topic for today, right? Uh, so the LCA has continued. This is the national dialogue, USA, right? There is a international dialogue with Roman Catholics uh, that the Lutheran World Federation manages together with the Vatican uh, Secretariat for Christian Unity with Dominican Relations, etc. cetera. Uh, and we're gonna say more about that later. But back to the basics, uh, ecumenical is a quote from a Greek word, like many things in Christianity, right? Since the New Testament was written in Greek. And it comes from the word for house or dwelling, oikos. So oikumene means the world as my house or the world at large, the inhabited world is the, the mission of the church, the whole world, of course. The world that we have known has been different at different times, right? For us today is truly a global experience. I mean, the world and the church is pretty much with very few exceptions, basically in all places. Actually, uh, there was a Roman Catholic theologian, Cal Ranner, mm -hmm. who was mm -hmm. a contributor and participant during Second Vatican uh, Council deliberations. Again, remember 1962 through 1965. And Cal Ranner said that the Catholic Church itself became truly global for the first time in the 1960s with mm -hmm. the Vatican Second Council. Mm -hmm. And I would say, in many ways, Christianity at large, really, if it, if it didn't become global, it acquired truly this global consciousness. And we'll explain more about that, but before Vatican, uh, uh, council, there was the formation of the World Council of Churches, which happens in 1947, meaning immediately after the Second War, right? The Second War, as you know, you have read the books, uh, it was uh, <clears throat> vast, what, devastation, not just in Europe, but beyond. And the churches wanted to do something. Actually, it has been said that Lutherans, after the war ended, immediately Lutheran leaders rushed to Europe, especially to Germany, to start working in the reconstruction and working with the church, in that case, Lutheran church in Germany and beyond. So two years later, the World Council of Churches was founded as a way to engage, contribute to the reconstruction, not just in terms of, of course, buildings, I mean, they didn't have that money, but especially in terms of relationships, meaning, as you know, the churches in Europe, especially in Germany, were divided in their reactions to the Nazi regime, right? So there was a lot of work that needed to be done within the church and in the relationships between church and society, mm -hmm. but also among churches themselves, Lutherans, Catholics, Reformed, 
other evangelicals speaking to one another instead of just accusing one another of participation, collaboration, not doing anything or do all, etc. So now we all then to, on the one hand, the World Council of Churches, again, 1947, and then to the Vatican Council, Roman Catholic Church, what has been called the renewal of, I use the, 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 the technical term first, ecclesiology, the doctrine of the church. What is the church? What is the nature of the church? What are the proper church orders for the church's authorities? We should be listening to, again, remember what happened in Germany. The church, the Lutheran church itself was deeply divided in Germany for uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who gave his life against the Nazis, there were bishops who joined the, well, <laughs> yeah, the Aryan church. <laughs> so, so there was deeply divided. Anyway, so uh, a lot of work. Reconstruction, uh, relationships, understanding. So the WCC was founded originally for churches to find a way to work together in this reconstruction of relationships and beyond. So they started as an organization with the, a focus on justice and peace justice and peace. And they continue to do that for the first few years. But when Christians come together to and work together on justice projects, reconstruction projects, just to get to know each other, they start asking questions about, by the way, is it true that you believe in witches or no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you say about the Eucharist? Do you really? Faith crisis right there. You know, they start asking questions about their faith, their belief. So, uh, in no time, the WCC created a new section and it's called to this day Faith and Order. Faith and Order is the arm of the WCC in charge of. Theological dialogues. Now, the, the work of justice and peace continues in many parts of the world. The WCC uh, supports many, many projects, whether it's sending nurses or teachers or helping communities build something, a road or whatever it is, but also the work of faith and order, meaning inviting Christians to speak to one another in matters of teaching, doctrine, faith, church order. By church order, we mean, uh, who are your leaders? Do you ordain them? How many kinds of ministries do you support? Do you have bishops? Do you have presidents, pastors, priests, presbytery? How do you even call them? So what do you teach about the Eucharist, about baptism, etc.? And there have been a lot of work, and the WCC uh, publishes uh, many papers, booklets, uh, collections of essays about many topics doctrinally. Right? Now, the most important document ever produced to this day, ecumenical theological document ever produced by WCC is called Baptism, Eucharist and Ministry, or BEM for short, 1982. And I think that I omitted uh, to mention <laughs> BEM, now that I realize that. You can write it down. 1988. <laughs> Uh, 1982, oh, 1982, BEM, Baptism, Eucharist, and Ministry, is also called the Lima document, like as in Lima, Peru, 
because the General Assembly met that year, 1982 in Lima, and they approved the document. And this is the one document out of faith and order that have most churches, known churches, participating, contributing, including at the time, Lutheran Church in America, American Lutheran churches, uh, previous bodies of the ELCA. So the ELCA has basically inherited that kind of ecumenical work, right? Uh, are there any questions thus far? This is uh, like the basics of why there is a WCC, what it has accomplished. Now, originally, and it says here, the WCC was uh, an organization uh, of Protestant churches by far, and then <laughs> other evangelical independent organizations and churches began to join. Eventually the Orthodox churches who were not there at the beginning joined. So Orthodox churches were behind BEM already and many evangelical, including Pentecostals, some Pentecostal churches. That's why BEM is so comprehensive. But there's one big church missing who is not an official member. Any 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 guess? Headquarters in Rome. Yes. <laughs> the what? Well, now the Roman Catholic Church has participated of many projects, dialogues, contributed, but has not been officially a member of WCC for reasons of their own, including their own ecclesiology. Um, so anyway, so that you know. Uh, so, but basically with few exceptions, everybody else is there. So it's not that the WCC doesn't want the Roman Catholic Church to be a member, it's yeah, the no. other way around. That the yeah, Roman well, Catholic yeah, for, for reasons that WCC understand, it has been explained many times. And if you look into the WCC webpage, I didn't reproduce that, but there is a, a line in the, uh, at the introduction, it says, that the Roman Catholic Church is not a full member of WCC due to per, uh, their own reasons, including reasons of ecclesiology, how they understand their own being a church. And they leave it there, you know. Uh, so it, it does say... Uh, 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 the, but the Roman Catholic Church ascribes to most of what's said in BEM. Or do they support BEM or the, the underlying? Concerns? They were not behind BEM. So all the churches that were behind, remember this is, these are representatives right. who put these things together. Not that all Lutherans were there at the table. So each church had 10 years after 1982 to react, to send a report we agree with this. We're not sure about that. We're okay. We wish they had said more about this. More work to be done. LCA, Lutheran Church in America, did. American Lutheran Church did. Moravian, for example, they have, in USA, have two main provinces, northern and southern. Individually, each province reacted, sent a report. United Methodist, in USA, then Methodists in England, all of them in many parts of the world sent their reactions and reports. There are two volumes that you can access electronically online of churches reports or reactions, uh, responses rather, that's the word they use, responses to BEM. Catholic Church, because they were not actually part of the document itself, they haven't, they didn't have to send a response. Uh, but what the Catholic Church is doing, probably better than anybody, to be honest, is engaging individually churches. 
They're working a lot with the Lutheran ELCA, aren't they? Yeah. 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 And beyond uh, ecumenical, normally it's applied to uh, other Christians, right? Mm -hmm. But they're also, well, the ELCA as well, but they're also involved, the Vatican, in interfaith, interreligious relations or dialogue. Mm -hmm. Here in USA, the uh, US Conference of Catholic Bishops, their committee on ecumenical and interfaith relations. We were told that they are involved in 23 dialogues right now mm -hmm. in United States alone. 23. Mostly churches, but also Judaism, Islam, mm -hmm. Buddhism. Some of the main groups. Uh, so I don't know of any, any church, honestly. You'll see that the LCA is actively, but it's here is, you know, in half a page. I can tell you what the LCA has been doing. Uh, uh, Katie? You, uh, yeah, sorry, I had a question. I'm still trying to wrap my head around what exactly is in BEM. Like, is it a statement of like it, it, yeah. where we have common ground or? or yeah. oh, that's, that's a very yeah. good question. Uh, they have to define each of the participant churches what is baptism, what is Eucharist or communion, and how do you understand ministry and the way you organize your ministerial orders. Mm -hmm. So this is this is a document that says like this is for every denomination. And the okay. thing is, in when you read it, you can see that several understandings of each one of those are included. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, in some churches, they ordain pastors, but not bishops. Mm -hmm. uh, in some churches, they ordain bishops, pastors, and deacons. Mm -hmm. and, and at the time, Lutherans only ordained pastors. Mm -hmm. Now, the ELCA, not all Lutherans, mm -hmm. The ELCA Lutheran, we also have an ordination for deacons, or actually it's called ordination to word and service. Mm -hmm. And that's like less than 10 years old. This may sound like kind of a cynical question, but like, like what's the point of that document? It's not the like best question. <laughs> like, what's the, like, like, what's the goal of that document? Like, if each individual denomination has its own understanding of itself, I mean, I guess, like, like especially, I mean, maybe not in 1982, but like now, all this information like could be easily accessed. Yes. Like uh, what you go to WCC yeah. org or something, mm -hmm. and you look yeah. into documents, right? And you have access to right. a lot of that, including me. So was the idea that like any other like leader of other denominations could go to this document and have an un like a basic understanding of what every other denomination's is a lot like, less yeah. condemning too. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. It's like a mutual yeah. agreement mm -hmm. or a mutual understanding. Mm -hmm. And then the, the clauses that say, and everybody else is a heretic, all that goes away. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> to some kind of understanding. Got it. Okay. Still behind the scenes sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they really were trying to see what do we have in common mm -hmm. as it comes yeah. to all former dialogue. Well, they weren't even dialogues, former conversations mm -hmm. were. We believe this and mm -hmm. you're heretical. Yes. Got this it. is yeah. what do we have in common and mm -hmm. let's work from there. Mm -hmm. But is the Missouri Senate is not part of this? No. Uh, well, no, they are. They, they are. are. They react, they responded to they did. Okay. Yeah. But understanding is the main focus, as Paul mm -hmm. said. Okay, got like, it. To understand each other. What is it that you exactly believe? Because we have many myths or misunderstandings. Oh, I see, I see. Or yeah, misrepresentations of what others actually are saying or believe. Mm -hmm. So allow, allowing then the others to explain what is it that they believe and the kind of practices that follow their belief, mm -hmm. doctrinally speaking. Mm -hmm. And they chose only these three areas, of course, baptism, mm -hmm. Eucharist, communion, and ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, understanding. But second is, oh my God, I, we actually agree more than we thought. Mm -hmm. or, or maybe we just use different words or names or terms for and the, the same, same thing. thing. Yeah. That's what happened um, between Lutherans and Roman Catholics. That when they sat down and discussed the meaning of communion and the meaning of Christ's presence in 
Greta Mike, mm -hmm. they realized that actually they were pretty close yeah. <laughs> in their belief and their understanding. The language is a big difference yeah. and needed to be explained. Mm -hmm. And now there, there are books written mm -hmm. about it. Uh, does that help? Yes. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So understanding and then to see how much we agree. Now, WCC always says they are, their purpose is not to be a worldwide church. Like, mm -hmm. it's about yeah. Christian mm -hmm. unity, mm -hmm. not organic union, like mm -hmm. coming together and being one church. That's, it's that's, kind of like that big tent idea, right? Yeah. Where everybody can actually work together, understand each other, stop the judgment or the condemnations of ages past, so as not to repeat them again. That's an, there's nothing cynical about the question. <laughs> yeah. You know, and also recognizing down the line, recognizing the validity of other ministers. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, that in our kind of cooperation mm -hmm. with the Methodists and mm -hmm. UCCs, we have Lutheran pastors serving joint worship. Right, right. All kinds of mm -hmm. combinations that weren't possible before. Yeah. Other questions? I mean, just to make sure that we're on the same page. Well, remember, a lot of the basic data is here, so for you to take. Uh, but let's speak about the ELCA, uh, the kind of uh, full communion agreement right, that we have in place. And I listed for you, on the one hand, uh, those full communion agreements in place, for example, with the reformed churches, you know, our crossings, right? And this agreement, which the, the date that you see there is when it was approved, right? 1997, reformed church agreements is with three reformed churches as listed there. Uh, with the Episcopal Church, uh, 1999, as you see, called to common mission, uh, with the Moravian Church, again, 1999. And in this case, both provinces, and I spoke about the provinces before, Northern Province and Southern Province, agreed to this. And with the United Methodist Church, 2009. Now, there are ongoing dialogues. Some of them kind, for whatever reason, stopped. Now they have been reignited again, like with the Disciples of Christ. Uh, so there you have with Amy and Amy Lee and Christian Church, Mennonite Church, the Orthodox Church. And of course, as we were saying from the beginning, Roman Catholic Church. And that dialogue began in 1965. I included there uh, the reports, the published reports from the first 12 rounds of Lutheran Roman Catholic dialogue in the USA. This is the national, right, one. And as you can see, uh, beginning 1965, uh, about the Nicene Creed, uh, baptism, Eucharist, Eucharist ministry, and so on. The most recent one is on teaching ministry, uh, was completed, approved, 2022. There was a delay in the publication. The publication finally came out just two months ago, in the end of November, 2023. Uh, it's not as sexy, accessible for free. You have to buy a copy. <laughs> but for others, actually, for a few of them, you can download a free copy either from the LCA site or from the United Church, uh, U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops website. Uh, and currently, uh, there have been already three meetings of the 13th round. And I'm, I'm a member of that round. Uh, we are, there are 16 people involved, like six theologians on each side. 
uh, from the OCA and Roman Catholic Church, then two bishops, uh, and then there is a recorder who is a, a young Jesuit uh, who is doing a PhD at Notre Dame University, a, a brilliant young man. He's our recorder. He's always there. And then, oh, uh, two more, like on the side of the LC, on the side of the uh, uh, US uh, CCB, there are coordinators. So we have a coordinator, they have a coordinator. That's already not 16, 17 people who are at those meetings. Uh, the 13 round, we're, we're still in the process of defining actually what are the main questions because when we go around the table asking people, what do you think this conversation is all about? <laughs> and then you can see our, some differences and expectations of what we hope to accomplish. Uh, so overall is about ministry the ministry of the church, the nature of the ministry. And now some people say, but we have to define holy orders. What do we mean by orders of ministry? What do we mean by ordination? Mm -hmm. What happens there? So uh, mm -hmm. how many uh, levels of or orders of ministry do we have? How do we think about it? But ultimately, and this is really probably uh, the main difference is how to understand uh, bishops uh, or more exactly episcopate, the, that ministry, the episcopate, the, the ministry of other side. So they, were, they are saying from the beginning that a special attention would be, would be on no defining episcopate, oversight, mm -hmm. the role of bishop, the place of bishops. Now, <clears throat> The dialogue with the Roman Catholic Church, we have seen from the beginning, begun in 1965. In 2015, of course, was the 50th anniversary of that dialogue. So to celebrate that, uh, a group of Roman Catholic and Lutherans came together, a small group. And they went through all the reasons. At the time, of course, the teaching ministry wasn't available. 11 reports. And they put together a book that states the agreements doctrinally, theologically, thus far. We agree on all this. And not so much disagreements, but differences. The publication is called uh, On the Way because it's with the Roman Catholic Church. It has to also be given a Latin title, In Via. <laughs> Declaration on the Way, published in 2015. And I would recommend it. Uh, I, that can be downloaded for free. Uh, they, because there was so much to handle, so much information, so much theology, so much writing, they decided to focus on church, the understanding of church. And that's a biggie. That's really. Uh, when it comes to Roman Catholicism, just the documentation about the meaning of the church is vast. I mean, I, I like to say that the Lutheran have written this much about church. Roman Catholics have written <laughs> like this crew, you know. And so it's not an easy task. But they said, oh, we need to speak about the church. Now, what does that imply? If, if we start asking questions about what do you understand by church? Well, you're asking questions like, what is the basic unit you need? You and IT of the church in your theology. So where, where is the fullness of the church represented or incarnated in your understanding? And Lutherans have an answer and Roman Catholics have another answer. Anybody have any idea? <laughs> have you read on the way? Uh, for Lutherans, 
all that all, the basic unit of the church is the congregation. Yeah, so I'm there saying. is an understanding yeah. that there is a kind, I mean, it has to be defined. What do we mean by fullness? That by itself needs to be defined. <laughs> but congregations, Lutheran congregations claim for themselves, we are the church, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and also, we're, we're Catholic. We're truly Catholic. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Church of Christ lives here mm -hmm. among us in, in, in its fullness. Like, in a sense, saying we don't lack anything. So we have ministries. We have the people. We have the Eucharist. We baptize. Mm -hmm. We worship. We pray together. You name it. For the Roman Catholic Church, the basic unit, the fullness of the church is represented, incarnated in the dios, not in individual congregations. Individual congregations are dependent on the dios, which is to say the dios is a communion of churches, of congregations that depend on one another. They are not independent of one another. So that means that when it comes to understanding the orders of ministry and speaking about the, the fullness of ordination, then the fullness of ordination is where? In the pastor of the diocese who is the bishop. And in among Lutherans, the fullness of our ordination is in the local leadership. You pastor. Pastors. I don't want to exclude anybody today. <laughs> uh, so that's very well expel out, explained in Declaration on the Way. And I wish we could do just one reading through it. It's wonderful, really. How Again, long is it? How many, how many pages? I mean, oh, it it's volume not, it's to volume. Is it just uh, I think like a, a hundred and forty something or yeah. fifty pages. Sure. What, what's so interesting to me, listening to you talk about this, mm -hmm. is that it's embodied in the legal existence of congregations, like Lutheran congregations. Each one is its own corporation. Mm -hmm. In the Roman Catholic Church, the um, each congregation may be a separate corporation, but the president of every congregation is the bishop, oh, and the rector is the secretary of the corporation. Oh, really? He is not the president. Uh, there's no local person who's the president, which, so even legally, they're, oh, it's embodied, yeah. it's yeah. embodied that way. See, there are actual consequences practical consequences to what we believe and say our theologies. So, and that's one uh, consequence or implication. Uh, oh, it's nice. Okay, so in on the way, they focus on the questions of the meaning of church. They also focus on questions of ministry. That's why the 13 dialogue is focusing on the nature of the ministry. And uh, on also the Eucharist again. Uh, but there's a lot of agreement. Now, they, in on the way, that report, 2015, again, to celebrate 50 years of dialogue, they don't say anything about baptism. Why? Because they realize that basically we have a full agreement on, about, about baptism. The understanding of baptism, what baptism does, who practices it, uh, how, in whose names, you name it, we agree. So they said, we really have nothing more to say on that. However, that said, when it comes to ministry, there's still questions surrounded out the idea of, as Lutherans like to say, that there is a kind that there's a ministry to all the baptized, or that there is a kind of priesthood of all the baptized. And that needs to be oh. clarified. Uh, so that is, that's included in ministry. 
no, that's not a question about baptism. It's a question about the understanding of the ministry of the church. Who does the ministry? And so on. So on the way is basically church ministry and Eucharist. There's still some questions about the practical implications of communion mm -hmm. for the life of the churches. Why? Uh, for example, why can't we say commune in the Catholic Church, as you can ask. There are priests who are so open that just come and I'm not going to read That's that. been my question the whole time. <laughs> but officially, if you commune in the Catholic Church, it means that you are in communion with the bishop all the way to the bishop of Rome. Sure. You agree with the authority and, and the, the role, the, the bishop of Rome and the local bishop, they are your pastors. So the thing is that communion means something for Catholics. But why do some Catholics, when they come to a Lutheran church or an Episcopal church or anything, I see them go take communion because but stone. Episcopal, within the same family yeah because episcopalians and lutherans for the most part not 100 percent for the most part practice what we normally call open communion or open table right that everybody and even the language of the invitation has changed through time because we used to say all baptized Christians are invited. Oh. Then all Christians are invited. All who believe in Christ are invited. Now, in many congregations, we just said all are invited. So uh, by far, the pastors that I know, when people come, they are there already asking. They do not send them back empty hand. Do you know what I'm saying? Right, so, right. But, uh, but some Catholics are accepting. They are that. surprised and apparently they like it. I <laughs> have I have spoken about ecumenical relations and about the 13 round of conversations to only Catholic groups at the university, Moravian University. There were professors, students, but they call themselves Catholics on campus. So, and I spoke to them and Basically, all of them were, why, why don't we have communion with one another? Even they're Catholics, uh -huh. and they're still the wondering, generation. what's yeah. the problem? Yeah. So that doesn't mean that because they're <laughs> sitting the, on the pews, like those you know, congregations, that we understand everything that's going on or not. I, so they are like, well, why not? So the main focus now, be WCC understanding. Uh, and probably agreements. For the ELCA, the focus is full communion. To arrive to full communion. Now, full communion, and you may say, but if, if they come and we give them communion already, or if we go to the Episcopal Church, uh, do we really need a full communion agreement? Because full communion actually means that I, as a Lutheran pastor, can preside at the table at the Presbyterian or Moravian or Episcopal Church or even more. I can be their pastor, mm -hmm. hired to be their pastor. That's what <clears throat> full communion implies. is full exchange of table and pulpit mm -hmm. is called. And we can hire a Moravian or an Episcopalian to be the pastor of this, I'm not suggesting anything, to this congregation. <laughs> See? And yeah. so we can preside at their table, they can preside at our table, etc. Now, remember, in practice, ecumenism has existed for a long time because we invite people. Well, we invite, a, say, a Baptist preacher to preach here, and the person preaches, and we don't have full communion with Baptists. See, the practice actually pushes the church 
to work towards a full communal agreement. Mm -hmm. But these full communal agreements that are, you know, you see here one, two, three, four, but in the case of reform, there are three churches involved. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six churches with which we have full communion, full exchange of table and portrait. Uh -huh. You know, I think one of the best examples of ecumenism that is um, the military chaplains in the oh, US. Yeah. That has a good example. Yeah. Um, ahead. And it's like the question of integration and other things like that. The military were ahead already for reasons of their own, but also with chaplains and things like that. Uh, but again, full communion yeah. agreement is more than just being nice to one another. Christians have learned to be nice to one another a long time ago. They didn't need the churches to tell them now to be nice. Uh, full communion agreements have implications for practice, for the way we carry our mission, etc. Uh, I will say more about that next uh, week. Uh, we need to say more about uh, the Lutheran Catholic dialogue. I'm going to bring then another of these with some more information. Again, uh, when it comes to the meaning of church, uh, orders of ministry, and communion is more than just communion. It's an understanding of church that is behind communion. Again, like with your question, friend, John, with your question, communion in the Catholic Church is more than just communion with Christ. With Christ. It's with Christ, with the local bishop, and all the way up to the Bishop of Rome, you are in communion with them. So even Catholic, them. So well, Catholics even, in the same family yeah. disagree with each other, I guess, because some went up and some. Well, and that's even, the meaning of family, I guess. <laughs> well, even like within your the church or maybe even the diocese, right? Like I like I understand that some some Catholic churches are more lax than others about yeah. divorced people or whether you've had yeah. um, confession right. recently. Yeah. Like, But that doesn't mean that I couldn't get into trouble. Yeah. Now yeah. and then yeah. you got a priest who gets into yeah. trouble For being too and the thing they yeah. can be moved. Actually, yes. the yeah. Pope just like, what, two months ago, the Pope yeah. fed yeah. up with uh, yeah. our yeah. bishop. Yeah. So we're in Texas. We Fire. move him. Yeah. You are not the bishop any longer. I, I'm tired yeah. of you. Well, what you were yeah, saying earlier great. about just how, like, I just, I'm that's such a, good thing. like, mm -hmm. mind-blowing thing about how the bishop is, like, the president, and that's really, like, yeah. where the, the first rung of power is. It's so But all the bishops yeah. have a pastor above them. And, and this is what Catholic keeps saying, is that everybody needs a pastor. So you do, you have a congregational pastor, you have a pastor for the diocese or the synod. And uh, don't you have a pastor for the whole church? They ask. Mm -hmm. Ours is the Bishop of Rome. Mm -hmm. He's our pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, Everybody they have a, a pastor. What's the understanding about who the Pope's pastor is? Is that just like you are as close well, to He God deals God directly with all the bishops they... directly. He doesn't deal directly with individual priests. Right. I mean, he doesn't have to. Right. He right. deals already with bishops and bishops deal with the pastors, right. and with the priests. But then above, and then above, like what's the understanding about like above the Pope? Is it like that idea that like- He's- uh, In direct he's, communication with- Yeah, well, his title, <laughs> uh, remember, God. he's the vicar God. of Christ. God. He's the vicar of Christ, right. you yeah. know. Uh, okay. he's, yeah, we'll say more next week. Yeah. So yeah. now you have to come back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Fascinating. We'll see yeah. you next week. You know, sometime I would love to have a little recap on just, just see how it doesn't quite some, relate some, directly some, to this, but I grew up in the Lutheran Church of America. And I don't remember when the Lutheran Church 